<laughs> Owen, what are you laughing on? Thanks for joining us on Toby Talks, presented by Max Care, your number one pet podcast on the net. Yeah, I call it problem porn. Yeah. <laughs> Learn about common pet behavior from the experts. I'm, I'm trying not to. Tips, tricks, and more as we interview experts and get their professional opinions. Uh oh, we lost them. We lost them. Oh, he's yeah, muted. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the first ever Toby Talks podcast presented by Max Care, a wellness club for pets. I'm Owen, Max Care co-founder and dog lover, sitting here with my puppy Toby, the star of the show. We're excited to start our dive into pet health and wellness topics with professional opinions and interviews each and every week. In our first chat, we are joined by Gotham, Max Care's co-founder, and Sarah Wilson, leading expert on human and animal bonding, to discuss the relationship between dogs and humans. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe for our weekly updates. And now for what you've been waiting for, here's Gotham and Sarah. Sarah Wilson. Sarah is an expert in the bond between animals and us, having completed her master's from Leslie University in an, uh, human-animal relationship. She's written and published numerous books. The one you might have heard of is My Smart Puppy. Besides writing and publishing, Sarah coaches clients trains other dog trainers, does some expert witnessing for court cases on animal aggression, and also consults with service dog organizations on their training practices. Did I get everything, Sarah? Um, th that covers. Thank you. So thanks for uh, coming on and uh, giving us your time. My first question, um, with people um, you know, getting pets now for many reasons, people have specific and generalized uh, reasons for adopting these pets. As an expert for over three decades in the, in, uh, of experience in this field, how do you see the pet owner relationship now? It's as complex and varied as every other sort of relationship because we all bring ourselves to the connection and we tend to see what we expect to see. If a puppy chews your shoe, one person might think, oh, he's bored. Another person might think he's mad at me. Another person might think he needs a run. Another person might think he's hungry. It all depends on how we view it. But no matter how we view it, we all make rich and meaningful relationships from our time with our animals. And now, right now, because of COVID, our connection to animals is more critical than ever. And I think going forward, animals will play an increasing role in our society and in our families. So it's a wonderful time for Max Care to be hitting the ground running because the world needs what you've got. That's really interesting, actually, the, um, the whole like you see or you the the perceiving you see it differently like that that's totally like i'll be with my girlfriend and i'll be like oh no like he needs this and then she goes well no he's just a puppy he's just behaving mm -hmm. for attention and it's like it, it's totally different how we see it and that's so interesting and i didn't realize that kind of builds the connection for us or is is one of the key things there it defines it. And so when I go in and coach people, I listen for the cues of how they're viewing it so I can coach them the most effective way possible. Yeah, I've heard I've heard that a lot. It's a lot about coaching the owner. Absolutely, because we're yeah. communicating to the animal. Yeah. So and the I, better I, we are as communicators, the easier it is for the animals to learn. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because I find if, if I'm acting like just a little bit off or differently in front of my dog he's going to do the same thing and he's going to yep. start acting weirdly like if i'm angry at something else my yep. dog is going to go and chew something because yep. i'm acting out yep exactly and he's a sponge he doesn't know what's wrong he just knows something's wrong and uh, then they have a limited number of ways of exhibiting that stress and chewing is a primary one especially for a puppy yeah that's amazing and similar line of questions sarah mm -hmm. um my wife has mentioned using um, our uh, six-month-old golden retriever as a therapy dog and volunteering at the children's mm -hmm. hospital mm -hmm. um, and i have heard that it could be quite um, uh, effective for mm -hmm. um, children who are struggling with various things so my question is what basic um, 
commands or what are the basic things that a dog like Charlie would need to do in order to, you know, be good in those types of situations? Wonderful question. And every group is going to have slight variations. But one of the first things is not to grab stuff off the floor. If there's food, it could be medication. It could be who knows what. We don't want him grabbing stuff off the floor. We want to make sure he stays very social and interactive with people, but not overwhelming. So not coming and not jumping, not mouthing, not coming right into their space. And as a puppy, we expect some of that, but you want to start honing that so that he knows how to be warm and friendly. We can teach him to put his head down on people's knees or to cuddle in against. Uh, because for children in particular, touch for all people, but for those of us that are distressed and children in particular, um, when we touch dogs, we release all kinds of positive uh, chemicals in our brains that c calm us down, they slow our heart rate, they lower our blood pressure, they make us more trusting, they can lower pain. So it's wonderful for people that are in distress. Any work with an animal is wonderful for that and can do things that absolutely a, another human cannot do. So it's a great goal and start with not grabbing stuff off the floor and being friendly and social, but not overwhelming. Do you have any tips for socializing a puppy with children when like, or when they haven't, I like my dog, it's seven months. I have no access to a child younger than 14. Now that I want to, and I can, and I'm a, I can bring him and see another child. What should I be doing? Like I keep him on a leash right now, but what else? Is there any other tips or tricks or things that I can do or tell the younger child to watch out for and help do so that he can well, be surprised? With a big pup like Kobe, I would um, have him sit and then I would take his collar in one hand and I'd have a treat in my other so that I could help keep him sitting. Yeah. Um, so he wouldn't knock into the child or frighten the child and then have the child come up and pet him from the side rather than from the front. Because from yeah. the front, a puppy will often, with complete abandon, just lunge forward to say hi. Yeah. And if the child's face is at that level, that can be a little intimidating. But oh, having his nose dealing with a treat and your hand on the collar, not strangling him, just gently yeah. holding it. So if he decides to lurch forward, you can help him to stay seated. So yep. that can create success. I love to create success. Oh, absolutely. That's amazing. Okay, cool. I'm going to have to give that one a try. Um, so Sarah, how would you, would you say the element of relationship changes when the human spends the entire day um, for the first, you know, however many months with a puppy versus the normal um, uh, standard of practice, which would be creating the puppy when they go to work or go away from eight hours for eight hours a day, because what we've seen is a large amount of adoptions because of the quarantining and you know social distancing and people working from home. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering how does that element change? Because obviously a lot more puppies now have um, 100% eyes on them all the time, which is great. But um, I guess this also would lead into a separating, separation anxiety type of question. But right. how, what's the main difference in how in that period of time? So, um, for one thing, any dog who's had you with them all the time will have separation issues. It doesn't necessarily mean they have separation anxiety, which is a very extreme version. We, I would expect any puppy that's been raised with people most of the time to have to go through the separation process the way they did when they were a baby. That's very normal. They're going to bark and fuss. But if you have real separation anxiety, you'll come back and the dog will have bent the bars of the crate or their feet will be bloody or there'll be pools of saliva. That's separation anxiety. Barking and or chewing when they're left alone, that's just being a dog um, and they need help. So preparing them now for that separation is really helpful. So crating them once or twice a day for a little bit so they know that you're around but they don't have total access to you can be really helpful. 
Another complicating factor is that many of us are lonelier and more isolated right now because of the social distancing. And we're leaning on our pets to supply the physical contact and the warm connection that we may, may not have access to through our friends and family. And we can't go see our grandparents. I can't hug my mom. Um, so Daisy gets a lot of contact because of that. And so teaching them how to be comfortable while separated is definitely something to start now as a gift to them going forward. So when life does go back to whatever new normal it is, I, don't, I think whatever it was in the past is gone. We're now into a new stage of something. Um, we do owe it to them to be comfortable whether you're there or not there. Yeah. And would it, would, um, I know a lot of um, pet parents are turning to telehealth and uh, virtual type services. Um, I'm wondering, would it be easy for a pet owner or um, somebody that's returning to work after working from, from home for a long time, uh, would it be easy for them to uh, get help identifying separation, you know, regular separation missing versus separation anxiety, or is that something uh, that can't be prevent preventative? If, um, um, you absolutely should. If you come back and your dog seems hugely distressed, then it's time to talk to a pro to see what we can do to help that dog. And if I may be so bold, if people go to mysmartpuppyschool.com, mysmartpuppyschool.com, I have a free course there for preventing separation anxiety because this is such a major issue coming up that I wanted to provide people free information that they could start using right now to help their dogs to make that adjustment smoothly. So that's there for people if they need it. What was that URL again, Sarah? MySmartPuppySchool.com. Awesome. You heard it there, guys. Sounds good. And we'll also make uh, make sure it's on the blog as well so people uh, that are listening have access to it, our members. Um, Sarah, then my next question, how would you say telehealth in general, um, uh, you know, maybe specifically Max Care, but telehealth in general will fit into this new landscape? And have you seen any trends? Um, you know, what are some exciting projects you're working on? Well, everybody wants convenience right now. And my uh, stepson, his cat got sick. And he had to sit in a parking lot in 98 degree weather for hours waiting for someone to come and give him information. And so number one, the rule is that pets get sick in the middle of the night or on Sundays. That's just the rule. Um, it isn't a rule but you'll find it's common. So telehealth is a wonderful uh, point there. You can just call someone and say, my dog just did this. What does it mean? Do I need to go to the ER or can I go back to sleep? Is this normal? Is this not normal? Having an expert to guide you through what's a standard thing a puppy's doing, like my puppy slept through the night. Now he's five months old and he's up in the middle of the night. Why? He's teething and his teeth hurt and it woke him up. Mm -hmm. Probably that's it. But if they're lethargic, if they have diarrhea, if they're vomiting nonstop, then you need to go to the ER. So getting that information from pros like uh, Max Care has is just a huge boon for pet people. And it's going to save you money because going to the vet is going to be 30 or 40 bucks in an office visit at least. And you guys are under 20 bucks a month for as many questions as people have. So it's a necessary service and it's a very uh, money saving service. Yeah, it's not even the money, it's the peace of mind too. It's a peace of mind. Knowing, yeah, that you can have that professional at any given time just back you up with your reassurance. Because I find anytime I hop onto Google or search the web, I'm I, all of a sudden it's worst case, worst case scenario, right? Yes. Yeah, I call it problem porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your leg is going to fall off, it's going to turn green. No, oh. it's the winter's ward. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and one of the cool things about Max Care is that uh, Max Care focuses only. Well, so we we focus first on at home remedies and practices that people can do. Um, of course, if it's a serious issue, um, we will we, we route them to the appropriate uh, channels. But 
um, we always will lead with the at home uh, suggestions first. Perfect, because that's what people need to know: what's safe to do at home and what can be done some other needs to be done some other way. Mm -hmm. So, switching gears here a little bit, Sarah, and uh, just on the general topic of uh, dogs, which we all love. Yes, we do. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> how we smart, do. How smart are dogs, and how would someone like you judge how good of a problem solver a dog is? And do you consider? "Quote unquote smartness." Forgive me for a lack of a better term. Uh, do you consider smartness uh, when it come uh, when coming up with training act plans and action plans for specific dogs or breed types? Well, every group has their sort of intelligence. Years ago, um, Stanley Corin asked obedience judges what was a smart dog, and of course, those were border collies. But border collies can be a lot to live in, with. Yes, they're smart, but other breeds that rated low from obedience judges, I've seen do brilliant things. Um, he always uh, he came up with sight hounds not being very bright. I've had a sight hound; they're plenty bright. They're just not so interested in pleasing you. But I know a dog who used to hide her uh, mother's keys so she wouldn't leave the house. She would go into the purse, take the keys, and hide them. That's smart. Um, obnoxious, problematic, but smart. Uh, so every yeah. dog I've seen uh, can have really intelligent um, members. And that's not always the easiest dog to live with. I always encourage people to sort of get a middle of the road dog, not the most active and not the most problem solving because problem solvers tend to get bored and solve problems like what's inside a couch um, how do you open a door? You know, those are not questions that are easy to live with. Mm -hmm. How would you determine, uh, let's say you're picking out a puppy and it might, and, uh, you know, there's a few different ones. What are you looking for in that moment or the best you can do in that moment to kind of find uh, a medium, um, what's the right word, a medium, uh, uh, middle of the road. Yeah. If you can talk to the people that raised the litter, if you're getting a pup, find out who was the first one out of the litter box. Who's the first one, you know, doing stuff, the boldest run. That's a lot of fun, but leave that for the person who wants an agility trained dog or a search and rescue dog. You take that nice puppy in the middle of the road that's just wagging and social and ears back and delighted to see you. That's likely to be the best pet. Uh, people always think that intelligence is linked to being a good pet, and that's not always true. Just like the smartest people aren't always best in relationship. They've got other things in their mind. So go for social and friendly and stable before you go for wicked smart. Wicked smart will uh, be a lot to handle, unless you're in the mood, and then by all means. Or unless you're picking one for the Border Patrol. Exactly. And then yeah. you want, and that's why the border patrol can adopt so many dogs from shelters because shelters are filled with highly intelligent, highly active, very demanding dogs. They make horrendous pets, fabulous border uh, patrol dogs. It's just like dating, right? Just because you broke up with someone doesn't mean they're never going to be happy in their lives. It's just okay. means you need to find a different partner. Um, and we all have our needs and our job is to know what our dog's needs are and to meet them where they are because they can't stop being who they are. Either we supply what they need in the terms of communication and training and exercise and stimulation, or we don't. And if we don't, we have to live with the dog that not doing it creates. So um, it frustrates me when people label dogs as difficult or stubborn when actually are, they all are just young and bored. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really interesting take on it, for sure. Because, I mean, even training my pup, I mean, there's some times where you're just like, oh, that stubborn puppy. But, I mean, it's just, that's just me internalizing the frustration, right? And well, it, it is. And also, we primates, we tend to generalize really easily. So if we yeah. talk them sit with him standing in front of us and us saying sit, and he sits, then we think he knows sit. He doesn't. Yeah. If you stood in front of him and made the same hand motion and said banana, he would sit. Yeah. Right? 
So if you now are standing next to them and say sit, often puppies will pivot in front of you to face you because that's what they understand the command means. Yeah. Um, so usually what we consider to be stubborn is a dog who's genuinely confused and we don't understand how they can be confused. Uh, years ago, I had this fantastic uh, Jack Russell Pitbull mix that I got after 9-11. That's a whole nother story. I was uh, in New York at the time, but oh. I was running a class and I said, this is how you teach a dog or this is what weight is. So I walked up to the door out of my classroom and said, wait, and my dog leapt out the door. And I said, oh, oh just a minute. That's a little embarrassing. And I called her back in and we went up to the door and I said, wait, and she leapt out the door. And then she pivoted and sat and stared at me because I'd always done weight coming into the room. I'd never done weight going out. So she was being very literal. Dogs do exactly what they understand to do, period, yeah. full stop. They're not being stubborn. They're not being difficult. Often people say a dog is stubborn because the person repeats. So they say, sit, 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 sit. And so the dog stands there and looks at them and goes, this time, next time, the third time, the eighth time, what's going on? I don't understand. And people say, see, he's being stubborn. And I say, no, see, you're being inconsistent. Uh, <laughs> that makes said, sense. Right? If you said it once and then followed through gently and kindly in a way that you'd already trained him to follow through so he knows exactly what's going on, pretty soon he'll do it on the first command. So what I was doing when I started doing the sit and on the walks, uh -huh. because I didn't understand it, is I would give him a tap on the butt. Yeah, yeah, very automatically, automatically sat down and now he's starting to pick that up because I'd like him sitting every time that we get to a corner so that I can look across the street, right? But And it, you can you can teach him at home to sit um using a lure and just a one finger tap. We're just talking about the most gentle like um yeah. asking a friend, excuse me, and tapping them on the shoulder. Yeah. And dogs can feel a fly land on their ear, they can respond to a very gentle pressure, but they have to have it trained. And then you yeah. can use it. So you just reach back, give him a gentle touch, and he goes, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, Dad. Yeah. I was distracted. Awesome. You know? Yeah, that's a really cool. Well, Gotham, do we have any more uh, questions on the agenda before we um, start to wrap this thing up? Um. So last question, Sarah, thanks for uh, your time again. You must have uh, come across some published reports or blogs where companies are now allowing employees to bring their pets uh, along to their offices or even the trend of office pets is picking up. Has um, any study been done to evaluate the relationship between pets and owners as well as the pets and office performance? Yes, there have been. And since we medicate ourselves through contact with our pets uh, we're not aware of it but when we touch them again our heart rate slows our blood pressure drops in a good way um, and we calm down when we get stressed at work we can then love on our pets for a second and we'll feel better so they found that people who had their pets with them are generally lower stress and more satisfied with work and the other people that came in contact with that pet who like pets, right? This has to be a dog loving person. Also, it lowers their stress too. So it tends to have um, a happier and less stressful work environment. So it's a very positive thing. Being a puppy has been trained or managed properly. Yes, right. Yes, exactly. And you get to really touch my uh, two month old puppy in the room was uh, not as easy as it sounds. Oh. No, no, no. I tell people that's like having a toddler who's got scissors in one hand and an indelible marker in the other. You watch them every second. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you watch them every second. <laughs> oh, man. So, Sarah, thank you again for your time. And um, I hope uh, the questions weren't too tough. And <laughs> <laughs> No, it's and, fun. Uh, and I, you guys are doing really important work, and I'm thrilled that you're kicking it off and going to be offering this to the dog and pet owner community. It's needed. Thank you. Yeah, we're really excited to be taking it off. Thank you. Well, there you have it, folks. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. It was a pleasure bringing you all of this information from our first guest, dog behavior expert, Sarah Wilson. 
You can find out more about her at her website, mysmartpuppyschool.com. And if you liked this content, you can subscribe for more on this channel or find us on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, TikTok, and pretty much everywhere else on the web with the handle at MaxCarePets. And be sure to head over to www.maxcare.pet to learn about our 24-7 peace of mind that MaxCare can bring to your family. Again, that's www.maxcare, M-A-X-C-A-R-E dot P-E-T. And our handle is at MaxCarePets. We look forward to bringing you more information next week.